Hello everyone, welcome back to this video series on clinical SAS SDTM programming. As part of this video series, we are taking a look at the SDTM programming general concepts which are commonly used across different domains. In this video, we will take a look at the lesson which talks about creation of epoch variable based on date variables in the SDTM domains. So some background about epoch and how it is used. In a clinical trial, the overall study duration is divided into distinct periods called epochs. Each epoch will have a specific purpose. For example, the epoch could be to screen the subject or to treat the subjects or to make any follow-up evaluations. And each epoch will have a specific start and end date or time. And there are no gaps between two contiguous epochs, which means the end date of an epoch has to be the start date of the next epoch. Reviews of the clinical trial will be interested in understanding the epoch in which an event or intervention started or the epoch in which a specific collection is made. So for this purpose, we create epoch variable in STTM domains. For events or interventions domains, we use the start date of the observation to derive epoch. In findings domains, we use the collection date to derive the epoch variable. So we compare the date of interest with the start and end dates of each element and assign the epoch based on the interval in which it falls. So what will we learn in this lesson? In this lesson, we will see how to derive epoch variable using a date variable and comparing it with each epoch start and end dates in subject elements data set and assign the epoch variable. Now let us take a look at the input data that we will be using for this lesson. So we have our CV data set in which I have already derived some of the SGTM related variables like CV test, CD test, original result, visit num, visit and the date in ISO format and the study date. So we will use this data set as input along with SC to create epoch variable. So in SC we have one record per element per subject and in the treatment epoch there is only one element so it is kind of like one record per epoch in this study's design. So we have discussed that there are no gaps between two elements. Say for example here if you see the screening period started on 3rd Jan and ended on 15th Jan. At the same time the treatment started, the treatment epoch started on 15th Jan and ended on 25th Jan. On the same day, the follow-up element should start as no gaps are allowed between two elements. So, and the follow-up started on 25th Jan and ended on 30th Jan. So, using these two data sets, CV and SC, we will be creating our epoch variable. So, let us take a look at the specification for this task. So, as we are trying to derive epoch variable, only the derivation algorithm for that variable is being given as we have already derived the intermediate variables as part of the input itself. So it says populate SDTM, populate using SDTM SC epoch by comparing CVDTC with SCSTDTC and SCENDTC of each element of the subject. It says populate as treatment when the record falls on the boundary of screening and treatment elements. Populate as treatment when the record falls on the boundary of treatment and follow-up. So let's go back to the input data and then see. So if you see, there can be records which are collected on the day when the screening ended and treatment started. And similarly, on the day when treatment ended and follow-up started. So we are being given an algorithm. So if a record falls on the boundary of screening and treatment epoch, we are being asked to choose to populate it with treatment. Similarly, on the collections which happened on the boundary of treatment and follow-up, we are again asked to give a preference for treatment epoch. So this can vary from study to study, but for this purpose, we are give, being given preference to treatment on the boundaries of screening and treatment, and again treatment on the boundary of treatment and follow-up. 
Now let us go to the form output and then try to manually identify the epoch for the input data we have. So I'm just trying to create some additional space for epoch variable. So in the pre-processing, what I have done is I have fetched the start and end date of each epoch and created variables for those. So start underscore SCR is the variable for which the for where the screening started and end underscore SCR is the variable on the day which screening ended. Similarly, start underscore TRT and end underscore TRT for treatment epoch start and end dates. Start underscore FU and end underscore FU are the start and end dates for follow up. So now what we need to do is compare our CVDTC with the start and end dates of each epoch and see where it falls. And there can be some records which fall on the boundaries of two different epochs or elements. So in that case, we are being already given the preference on which should be used. So now let us begin with CVDTC, which happened on 13th Jan 2010. So let us take a look at the screening start and end dates. So screening started on 3rd Jan and ended on 15th Jan. So 13 clearly falls in between 3rd and 15. And this is not on the boundary of uh, screening start, screening end and treatment start. So we can directly assign the epoch as screening. So now let us go to the next record. And this collection is made on 15th Jan. So we have seen that screening started on 3rd, 3rd Jan and ended on 15th Jan. So which is also the start date for treatment epoch. So when the record falls on the boundary of screening and treatment, we were asked to give preference for treatment epochs. So as this is on the boundary of screening and treatment, so we should populate it as treatment based on the preference provided. And then now let us move to the 17th Jan record. So treatment started on 15th and treatment ended on 25th. So this is clearly in between the treatment start date and end date and there is no overlap on the boundary. So this can clearly be assigned the epoch of treatment as it clearly falls in between the start and end dates for the treatment epoch. And then there is this collection on 23rd Jan. So we have seen that treatment started on 15th Jan and ended on 25th Jan. So this 23rd Jan is clearly in between the treatment start at end date and there is no confusion on this record being the boundary of treatment and follow up. So we can safely assign the epoch as treatment. And then we have our next record which was collected on 26th Jan. So we have seen that treatment ended on 25th Jan, which means the follow-up started on 25th Jan and the follow-up ended on 30th Jan. So again, here in this case, there is no scope of overlapping on the falling on the boundary. So we can safely assign the epoch as follow-up. So we have manually identified where the record falls in, in terms of epoch based on the specification provided to us. Now let us take a look at the programming approach that can be used to derive epoch. So I have just created a copy of the input data set provided to us. And then I am processing the subject elements data set to create the start and end dates for each element. So I have created a short variable called uh, variable called short and assigned it a description for each element for each epoch. So if epoch is equal to screening, I am using an abbreviation of SCR for treat for treatment. I have used an abbreviation of TRT and for follow up, I created a short abbreviation of FU and then sorted this data set and then here in this case, I'm transposing the subject elements start date. So, and I'm giving a prefix of start underscore and I have also provided the variable short on the ID statement. So what I get is a data set which contains the start dates for each of the element or epoch for 
all the subjects one record per subject and with start date for each element or epoch as a variable with the prefix of start underscore and with the names of SCR, TRT and FU for screening, treatment and follow up. Similarly, end date is being transposed. Here, the prefix of end underscore is being used. So, in this transpose, we'll get one record per subject and a variable for end date for screening, end date for treatment and end date for follow up. And all of them are being prefixed with end underscore. Now after that I am merging start and end dates at subject level so that I will have the start date for each element or epoch and start date for end date for each element along within the same data set. Now I am bringing the epoch dates into the CV data set where I have my CVDTC which I need to compare it with the start and end dates of each element or epoch. So when I'm using this word each element or epoch in the treatment epoch there is only one element. So in this case what is happening is like one record per element or one record per epoch is the same structure. So there can be cases wherein there will be more than one element within the treatment epoch. In that cases so we'll have to use the earliest date uh, within the epoch for start date and use the latest date within that epoch as the epoch's end date. So here I have fetched the start and end dates into the CV data set. After that, I have compared the date under consideration. So I am creating a temporary variable called YMD and assigning it the value of CVDTC. So I am comparing the date of interest with the start and end dates of the each element and checking where, where it falls. So I am assigning a value of screening to the epoch variable when the date of interest is falling in between start of screening but less than end of screening because end of screening and the start of treatment is the same. So when the record falls on the boundary we were asked to give a preference for treatment. So I am excluding that boundary of screening end by using less than here and there can be cases wherein the subject did not enter into treatment yet in that cases treatment start date will be null so if treatment start date is null or the start date of treatment epoch is null so i am checking whether the record is falling within the start and end of screening. In fact, this should have been less than or is equal to. So when the subject did not start treatment, we, that can be given a preference of screening itself. So if we can just replace it with less than or is equal to for the subject who have not entered into treatment epoch. So otherwise we are checking whether the record or the collection date is falling in between start and end date of treatment and assigning it a value of treatment here again so we know that if a subject entered into follow-up the end date of treatment and the start date of follow-up will be the same so here we were asked to give a preference for treatment epoch when it falls on the boundary of treatment and follow up so when we are using less than or is equal to the record which is falling on the boundary of treatment end and follow up is being given a preference for treatment otherwise we are entering into the condition for epoch is equal to follow up so again here we have made sure that start of follow up less than ymd less than or is equal to end of follow up so as we have already considered the boundary of treatment and start of follow up in the previous uh, condition we are excluding again that uh, start of follow up here when assigning the value of epoch is equal to follow up so this is the programming approach that can be used to derive the epoch variable so let us take a look at the some of the intermediate data sets that are getting created as part of this code so now we have our SC02 in which I have created this short variable which is parallel to our epoch variable. So SCR for screening, TRT for treatment and FU for follow up. And then we have created one record per subject and to contain a variable which has the start date for each element. So we have used proc transpose, transpose the subject element start date and then restructured it in such a way that we get one 
variable for each epoch's start date start screening start of treatment and start of follow-up similarly we transpose the subject element and date and made sure that we are getting a record per subject with three variables one for screening one for treatment and one for follow-up which has the end dates so there can be cases wherein the subject who have not entered into follow-up or who have not entered into treatment in those cases the subjects will have null values in these variables so and then we have just merged start and end dates into a single data set and then merged this data set again to cv data set where is this so we have merged the processed epoch dates into cv data set and then compared it the cv dtc with start and end dates of each element and created our epoch variable and then finally resorted the data set and dropped the temporary variables to have our final output so we have seen that there was one screening three treatment element and one follow-up record based on our manual identification as well so this is how we can derive epoch variable using subject elements data set thank you for watching keep learning